the end of days, justice shall fall upon the world of men. Since the dawn of time, a perpetual war called the Eternal Conflict has raged between the hosts of the High Heavens and the legions of the Burning Hells. Amid this battle, a group of rebellious angels and demons sought refuge. And so, they created the mortal realm of Sanctuary, using a monolithic crystal known as the World Stone. Hidden from the eyes of the heavens and the hells, Sanctuary became an oasis of peace, but its serenity did not last. In time, evil crept into the world and began a relentless crusade to twist the souls of mankind to its dark will. Players were invited to take on the role of a lone hero and explore Tristram, a town under siege by Diablo, the Lord of Terror, and his hordes of foul demons. With the help of the wise Herodric scholar Deckard Cain and other memorable characters such as Wirt and Ogden, players ventured into the haunted tombs, catacombs, and caverns sprawling beneath the town and faced nightmarish foes like the Butcher, the Skeleton King, and eventually the Lord of Terror himself. Diablo II's four-act story would lead players on a gripping campaign to track down the lone hero who had defeated Diablo in the first game. In the wake of his victory, this mortal champion had sought to imprison the Lord of Terror within himself. While his intentions were noble, the hero fell to the Lord of Terror's corruptive influence. Known afterward as the Dark Wanderer, he set out to find two of the Burning Hell's other demon lords, Baal, the Lord of Destruction, and Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. Diablo II's cinematics would tell the story from the viewpoint of Marius, a tragic character accompanying the Dark Wanderer. In-game, players would witness the aftermath of the Wanderer's deeds as they raced to thwart his quest. The adventure would also introduce players to characters both old and new, including the familiar scholar Deckard Cain and the noble Tyrael, the Archangel of Justice. Diablo II's expansion set, Lord of Destruction, continued the harrowing story of Sanctuary's heroes. After defeating Mephisto and Diablo, players pursued Baal and his demonic forces to the legendary Mount Ariat. There, the Demon Lord was narrowly defeated, but not before he had corrupted the World Stone, the immense crystal that had been used to create Sanctuary itself. Seeing no other recourse, the great Archangel Tyrael hurled his enchanted rune blade into the crystal, igniting a catastrophic explosion. It has begun. In Diablo III, Deckard Cain appears once again, along with a new character, Leah. The story takes place two decades after the World Stone's destruction, when a fiery comet appears in the skies, careening toward Tristram's dilapidated cathedral. Drawn by this foreboding omen, players venture out to investigate the comet and discover its true meaning. Over a decade ago, the journey into Sanctuary began. In 1995, a small development studio named Condor Games set out with the ambitious dream of creating a claymation turn-based single-player RPG. Its working title was Diablo. Condor pitched its radical idea to various publishers until the company approached Blizzard Entertainment, a developer fresh off the success of its real-time strategy game, Warcraft II. The promise of swords, sorcery, and slicing through waves of demons was enough to sell Blizzard on the idea. The two companies dug in and set to work on Diablo, but not without making a few changes to the game's state. 
Diablo's turn-based mechanic was replaced with real-time combat. In hindsight, this was a crucial decision. The game's relentless hack-and-slash feel would become one of the franchise's cornerstones. As work on Diablo moved forward, Blizzard was increasingly impressed with Condor's creativity and design savvy. Halfway through the game's development, Blizzard's parent company, Davidson & Associates, acquired Condor. The studio was later renamed Blizzard North. Diablo missed its intended holiday release date and hit store shelves on December 31st, 1996. But this setback did not diminish the game's success. Diablo's simple but fun gameplay captivated gamers. Over the next year, it sold more than 750,000 units and won GameSpot's Game of the Year award. Much of Diablo's success was thanks to the game's replayability. Dungeons, items, and monsters were randomly generated, meaning that no two playthroughs of the game would ever be the same. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. Diablo's dark artistic style and cinematics, haunting soundtrack, and liberal amounts of blood and gore created the perfect gothic horror atmosphere. Diablo was also the first game to be released with Battle.net, Blizzard's free online gaming service. Battle.net would become a pillar of Diablo's success, as well as that of Blizzard's future games. In the year following Diablo's release, the number of Battle.net users surpassed 700,000, with 13 million games played. Ah, fresh meat. Already, gamers were anticipating a Diablo sequel. So too were Blizzard North's developers, but crafting a sequel would be a task exponentially more difficult. The time that was poured into Diablo II soon eclipsed the long hours that Blizzard had spent creating the first game. After three years, Diablo II was released worldwide on June 29, 2000. Diablo II introduced many new features to the franchise, such as branching skill trees, crafting, and even the legendary cow level. Yet it also stayed true to its roots as a fast-paced and accessible action RPG. Rather than being confined to one area of sanctuary, players would be able to venture through vast deserts, dense jungles, and even the burning hells. Diablo II garnered numerous awards and sold more than one million units in the first two weeks, setting a record for the fastest-selling PC game of its time. The number of active Battle.net users swelled to 8.5 million, with more than 1 million games played per day. In 2001, Blizzard released Diablo II's expansion set, Lord of Destruction. Diablo II and its expansion received an extremely positive response from gamers and critics alike. In light of this success, it seemed obvious that Blizzard would create another Diablo game. But as the years passed, no official word of a new Diablo title surfaced. When Blizzard North closed its doors in 2005, some gamers questioned when, or even if, the realm of Sanctuary would be explored by Blizzard's developers again. In truth, development on Diablo 3 had begun in 2000, although this early version of the game was altered drastically over time. Following Blizzard North's closure, some of Diablo's developers moved to the company's headquarters in Southern California. There, work progressed on what would become Diablo III. In 2006 and 2007, the Sin War Trilogy by Richard A. Knack was released. These novels created a foundation for Diablo's future lore and also hinted that Blizzard had not abandoned Sanctuary. The truth was finally revealed on opening day of Blizzard's 2008 Worldwide Invitational in France. Following this announcement, information about Diablo 3 flooded the internet, while playable demos were showcased to the public at conventions such as BlizzCon. 
Like its predecessor, Diablo 3 features five distinct classes. New mechanics include health globes to enhance the pace of combat. A more refined PvP system complete with competitive play environments and new skill trees and crafting systems that allow gamers to customize their characters in exciting ways. What am I missing, Uncle? What am I supposed to see? Some of Blizzard's most compelling cinematics to date were created to bring Diablo 3's world and story to life in astounding detail. Nearly every facet of Diablo 3 is poised to do just as its predecessor had done, to provide the lands of sanctuary with even greater depth, and perhaps for the first time, truly bring them to life. But even so, a vast road of potential still lies ahead. Only time will tell where it leads next, and what terrors await players in the years to come.